of last night. It was magnificent. But we're going to partake on the second part of this word, Lord God, that you have given us from heaven. We ask that the words continue to fall on good soil, bring forth fruit edifying for your kingdom. We ask that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy our sight, my Lord, my strength, and my redeemer. In your son Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah! Today we are talking on a topic called relationships. We were talking on that yesterday. And today we're talking about our relationship to Jesus. Many times people don't realize that we are related to Jesus. Amen. So if you are related to Jesus, that means he's your relative. And if he's your relative, he has things that you want, he will give you. Amen? Amen. If, I, if I have a sister and she's my relative and I go to her and ask her for something, she will give it because she's my relative. So if you go to Jesus and ask him for something in God, you go to God and ask him in Jesus' name. For something, he will give it. Why? Because you're related to him. He said, you are my brothers and sisters. He says this in the Bible. He said, a man lay down his life for his friends. We are more than his friends. We are sons and daughters of God. And if he's the son of God, then we're related to the son of God. So we have right as being related to Jesus to get things from him. And many people don't know that. Hebrews chapter 2 is the scripture. We're going through quite a few. And we do this because God is in charge of how the message comes across. We were talking this morning, me and my wife. Not everybody understands the way God works on me. Not everybody understands the way God works on glory of God. It's not always the way everybody... You know what I learned? If everybody's doing the same thing, something is wrong. If everybody got the same service, something is wrong. If everybody got the same tongue, something is wrong. If everybody got the same dance, something is wrong. If everybody got the same preacher, something is wrong. Somebody got to be different. Somebody got to stand out out of the bunch. And I'm glad I'm that somebody. Amen. And I don't, I don't, I don't worry about other people. Uh, 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 talking about me it's alright because I know the Bible and that's all I stand on is the word of God mm -hmm. everything else will fail but the word of God so I stand on the undoctrinated word of God chapter 2 verse 1 mm -hmm. and it reads therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard lest at any time we should let, let them slip for if the word spoken by an ain't by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedient received a just recompense or reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him, which is the apostles. God also bearing them witness both with signs and wonders and with divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. Mm -hmm. For unto the angels have he not put in subjection the world to come. Wherefore we speak, but one in a certain place testify, saying, what is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou visitest him? Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crownest him with glory and honor, and did set him over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he had he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him. In other words, Jesus Christ is what they're talking about right here. And because Jesus Christ it, it, 
it, everything is put under his feet. As us being related, everything that we go through is put under our feet. Or under his feet. So we could take our situations and put them under his feet. So in other words, you could say, Satan, you're under my feet. Why? Because the Christ that I serve and that I am related to have put every sickness, disease, argument, trial, tribulation under his feet. So you have power to recognize you don't have to be defeated, put it that way. You don't have to fall into temptation of sin. You don't have to be disrespected or talked about. You don't have to be ridiculed. And if you are, you don't have to accept it. He made Jesus a little lower than the angels. Why? So that we may be somebody. He made Jesus less than so we may be somebody. So once you realize that Jesus rose again and became the chief of everything for you, that makes you the chief of everything. Listen to what he said. We are what? Joint heirs to the kingdom? We are family. This earth, we tell that we are family with Christ. We are one with Christ. What he said, you take off my body and of my blood, you become one with me. So you have his body in you. You have his blood in you. So you are royalty just like he is. You are powerful just like he is. You are victorious just like he is. And don't let nobody tell you otherwise. Because he said right here, he made everything under his feet. Everything. That means bad people is under his feet. Foolish people are under his feet. Nobody could stop the will of God in your life except you allow it. Look at verse 9. But we, but we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death crowned with glory and honor that he by the grace of God should taste death. My God, look at that. For every man. So I got a right to say I ain't going to taste death. Because he tastes death for me. Jesus. That's what he said right here. But we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor. If we are related to Jesus, we are crowned with glory and honor. That's why he gave us our group honor in the, in the spirit and our church name, Glory of God. Because we are crowned with honor and glory. Check this out. If you're crowned with honor and glory, then you need to act like it. You need to dress like it. You need to speak like it. You need to live like it. Jesus didn't go around saying, may I? Is it alright? I'm sorry. He didn't do that. Jesus went around and said, this is how my father said it's going to be. This is how it is. Accept it or leave it. But this is it. Jesus didn't have no problem with telling people about themselves. I do the things that do the will of my father. There is no evil in me. How dare you tell me I cannot worship in the house of the Lord? This is the Lord's house. Get out of here. How dare you I cannot heal on the seventh day? This is the Lord's day, but this man needs to be healed. He's going to get healed. How dare you I cannot, I cannot, I cannot. No such thing as I cannot in the name of Jesus Christ. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. So how can you tell me I cannot? This is the message he's trying to get to the church. Stop letting the devil tell you what you can and cannot do. If you're related to Christ, you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you and believe it. Trust and believe that what he wrote and what he said is real and it's true. Don't take no shortcuts. Don't take no second best. 
You get nothing but the best because he made you the best. You are royalty. That means you deserve royal fuck. I'm royalty. I want royal garments. I'm royalty. I want royal friends. I don't need to hang around with bad buggers, bug, buggers, buggers, or whatever you call them. I left that mess alone. Why am I still over there with them? I got a new mission. Why am I still with the old mission people? I'm on a new course. Why am I still with the old course? They going left. God telling me to go right. I'm going to keep going left. They don't want to follow. Let them go. Try. That's what Jesus said. Deny thyself and follow me. Take up your brother and follow me. And they didn't want to follow him. He said them 12 followed him. Didn't he say it? Yes. He said, didn't I choose you 12? Right. And one of you is a devil? Check that out. He chose a devil. Sometimes you need a devil in your camp. Stir up some stuff. Make some people pray. <laughs> if everything going smooth, there ain't nothing going to ruin anybody going to pray. So I need some animosity in there for a minute. Remember we taught about Judas. This is going to be a little lengthy, so I'm going to get back in it, but let me talk about Judas. It wasn't necessarily that Judas betrayed Jesus because he didn't like Jesus. He betrayed Jesus because he was jealous. And that's what's bad with this world. People are jealous of other people and that's disgusting. Jesus was not jealous. He sent them out and said, do more greater work than I did. Do more than me. These people don't do nothing. Stay still. Don't move. Don't even try. Why? Because you think I'm going to do better? You should be glad if I do better. That means you taught us well. But this is what Jesus was telling them. Go out and do better than me. Greater work shall you do than I. That's, that's the kind of pastors we need. To want their members to do better work than they do. I don't want to be the best of everything. I want to give you and you grow. Add on to your faith, patience, love, all the other attributes of the fruits of the spirit. I don't want them all. Let me give you something you add on to yours. Mm -hmm. That's what the Bible said. That's what the Bible said. And this is what we teach here is the Bible. But look at that again. First said, for it became him for whom are all things and by whom all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. So we are sons under Jesus Christ because of what he went through. For both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all of one. My God. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them What's a brethren? A brother. A fellow laborer. So we are brothers of the Most High God. We are sons and daughters of God. We are brothers of Jesus, sisters of Jesus. That right there should make you shout every day. That's something to rejoice about every day, knowing that you are joined here. You are a brother, a son of God. You are a daughter of God. You are in royalty. We read the scripture of Peter, but do we really believe it? That we are royalty? Because of Jesus Christ, we are no longer bastards. We are no longer bastards. We are sons and daughters of God. He reconciled us back together so we can walk in newness of life. We don't have to be scared to die because we don't taste death. We can live. We're living because of Jesus Christ. He's done so much for us and we don't take advantage. That's sad. To have someone die for you and do so much for you and you don't even tap into a piece of what he did for you. Amen? We need to get in motion 
with God. He's moving this time. He's moving this year. He's moving fast. And so many people are sleeping and not moving with him. They missing it. They missing the whole boat. They missing the whole show. They missing everything. The, 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 the people are sleeping now. Remember the, the Bible said, wake up from your slumber. Be vigilant. Stay awake. Your adversary. Not my adversary. Your adversary. That means you got a personal adversary that talks in your ear and tell you you're not right. God didn't say that. The same thing he said that the, the serpent said to Eve, the devil is doing today. You ain't right. God didn't tell you to do that. He ain't tell you that. Try it. He is when you be like this. Same garbage. Read Genesis and what the devil told Eve. And that's the same thing people are saying in your ear right now. You don't do that. You're going to fail. Don't do that. God didn't tell you that. I'm telling you. Who are you to tell me what God's telling me? All right. The same God you serve is the same God I serve, and he's telling you about me? Why? I got ears. I can hear. I can relate. I got the spirit of Christ. I got the Holy Ghost. Why can't he talk to me? Them days of old are past. He broke down the wall of separation. He said those days of old are past. He said we no longer need to go to a priest. We no longer need to go to a seer. We no longer need to go to a man to get a word. We have direct access to the kingdom of God. You can ask God right now and believe and he will give you a message. He said ask and it shall be given. He didn't say ask your friend to ask him for you to get a word. But people are doing that. I got so bad. People got so mad at me. I said, well, I'll wait to God tell me that. I don't trust everybody. You can't trust everybody. You got to be wise if you're in ministry. You got to have wisdom. God gave us wisdom, knowledge, and a good understanding to watch and see how people are. You don't have to forfeit. I ain't fall for it in the world. I ain't going to fall for it in the ministry. I'm smarter now because I got the Holy Ghost sharpening up my, my senses. Amen. Glory to make the certain of captain of the salvation perfect through suffering for both he that sanctified and they who are sanctified are all of one. For which cause he is not ashamed to call us brethren, saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the church when I sing praise unto thee. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which God have given me for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same that through them he might destroy him that had look at that word right there past tense that had the power of death that is and I don't care what people say don't say his name that is the devil <laughs> look at the bible it said the devil had the power had means past tense he don't have it no more. Devil, you're under my feet because I'm with Jesus. You don't have no power. So like I said, like the Lord said yesterday, if you have an issue and, and it's not resolved, it's not the devil's fault, it's your fault. Because the devil is under your feet. He has no power. He only has the power you give him. If you don't correct the situation, it won't be corrected. If you don't fix the situation, it won't be fixed. Jesus is not coming down dying again for you. He died, gave you the keys, you use them. If you don't want to use your keys, that's your problem. The devil has no power. And I'll say it again, the devil has no power. Not at all. If he had, then read Revelation, why God going to give him power for several years and let him loose on the earth? Read your Bibles. Don't be persuaded by all kinds of doctrine 
Because some people, a lot of people, don't know the word of God. Don't have the spirit of Christ to preach or teach the word of God. All they know, I believe that here. All they know is foolishness. All they know is foolishness. And verse 15, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage for fear of death. So if we are delivered, we should not fear death. That's right. What are you afraid of? Only time you're afraid of something if you're not living right. I'm not afraid of cop because I know I'm living right. But if you're afraid of cop, then you must be doing something wrong with crime. I ain't afraid of the judge. I ain't nothing wrong with me. So why am I afraid of the devil? Ain't nothing in me. Jesus went to hell and said, what you going to do? And now I got Jesus. The same Jesus that went to hell is in me. So I can say, what you going to do? Give me your best shot. And I guarantee you, it ain't going to happen. Ain't nothing going to happen to you. If you know God like we do. Trust me, I know. I'm not telling you something I don't know. I've been through 18,000 billion trillion trials and tribulations in my life. And I stand on the promises of God. And everything was worked out perfectly. Perfectly. I'm guaranteeing you the truth. God will do it. If you just don't give in to the devil. Don't give in to his schemes. Don't give in to his his, 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 his tactics of scaring, scare tactics. Don't give in to it. And don't get upset when you make a mistake. Get back up and get, get on the horse. Don't be afraid. We all going to make mistakes. We are just learning. I'm making mistakes still. I'm just learning. But I know how to call on Jesus Christ. And get forgiveness for my mistakes. And I know how not to remember it no more. Because it's in the sea of forgiveness. And if you bring it up, I know how to ignore you. Mm. All right now. I stay away from people that talk about my past. I don't mind being alone. All you're going to keep talking about is what happened last month. Last year. I don't want to hear that garbage. That's done away with. Jesus don't even remember it no more. God don't even remember it no more. So why are you still remembering it? Because you're the devil want to put something in my ear. No, God have mercy. Protect your ears at all costs. He's speaking to some people. Through some people. That don't have your best interests at heart. They don't. And they are fooling you into thinking they do. Nothing wrong with trying a new thing. Amen. Amen. Where we at? For verily he took not on him, him the nature of angels, and he took on him the seed of Abraham. Otherwise he became flesh. Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, which is us, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation. Y'all got to get the scripture stuff. These people are not. You got to understand what is in this Bible. It's more than just the 23rd Psalm. It's a lot of meat and, 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 and understanding in this stuff. Look at what he just said there. Merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to secure them that are tempted. So no matter what issue or what situation you're going through, God is able to bring you through it. Don't ever think he can't do it. He can. When you relate to Jesus, there's some things you must do. You got to remember he has, he has your back, number one. You're not alone. You're related to Jesus, he has your back. I'm related to my big brother. He got my back. My relatives got my back. You know they say blood is thicker than water. Every time I drink that blood and eat that body, that blood is thicker than water. So I love taking communion. Got the blood of Jesus. And I take that blood. That's we blood brothers. <laughs> we blood brothers, me and the man. 
That's right. And we got the same.